the Shelby. Shelby's had a pretty colorful past. It used to be a very small, quiet town, homestead town. You know, there was a lot of cattle and sheep and agriculture. You know, the homestead on the, the Great Northern Railroad back in 1910, when a lot of these little communities were being built, was basically by the railroad. This is Lorette Carter, Community Development Coordinator for the city of Shelby. She's an incredibly fun person to be around and a huge champion for her community. Being born and raised here, it's always been our community. Uh, raising my boys here have, has been a great experience. I, they got the same education I did, so I, I appreciate our school system. I appreciate that other families were watching out for my kids as I'm sure they watched out for me growing up. In, in a small town, I think the community is, is, is what makes you who you are, not just your family, not just whatever, but an entire community. So Shelby's been a great place to live and raise my boys. And so when I had the opportunity to work for the city of Shelby and to do good things for Shelby, I thought, this is where I belong. Since our visit occurred in the spring and it was finally quite nice outside after months of being cold, Lorette took us for a walk. We admired the architecture and neon signage that lined Main Street and she told us some local history. They also had a kind of a mercantile shop and when, when I don't know, depression time or whatever, there was no money to be had. So they, in their history that I've read, uh, rather than um, actual, because nobody had money, so they kind of traded in these coins and, and when people had money again, the coins became money and so they were actually floated a lot of people you know, through those hard times on this coin system, which was really kind of well ahead of its time, but Sounds it kept like the it's stores like open. Bitcoin. Yeah, maybe. No. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. But one thing you learn real quick in Shelby is you don't have to ask too many questions before your conversation will land on what is likely the most well known moment in Shelby's 108 year history. The fight that began as a gag became a publicity stunt and ended as a financial catastrophe. Jack Dempsey versus Tom Gibbons in Shelby, Montana. Both fighters touch gloves as this world heavyweight championship fight gets underway. Jack Dempsey and Tommy Gibbons, and then they and then we had the um, referee put in as well. Uh, we have a local uh, artisan that created these iron silhouettes. When we built Champions Park, we asked the um, the contractor to also label on the sidewalk the expanse of the arena. So here's the seat A, B, C, D, and it continues on. And then these are double R, double, so it, of course, and so it goes all the way to where the center of the ring would have been. So it kind of gives you an idea of the expanse of the ring. Eventually, um, we'll have electric or lights that will, those ballards will light at nighttime so that you, you kind of get that evening effect of the, of the fight ring as well. So, and then each of those signs relates to it, the main event, the con, or the con main event, the fighters, the arena, the money, and the setup. The boxing match was filled with all kinds of intrigue, double crossings, and mobs of locals storming the event in refusal to pay for the absurdly high ticket prices at that time of $10. But we'll come back to that after we pay a visit to what feels like the next biggest attraction in Shelby. The carousel, which has been restored by hand by lifelong resident and octogenarian, Harry Benjamin. I've been busy. You seem to be pretty popular. <laughs> yeah. I was born and raised here about 86 years ago. Yeah. I worked all winter and all summer restoring this thing for piece by piece. Every piece I've been through that. It had a lot of wood structure and the wood was getting rotten and I replaced it with all three by three square tubing steel. And, and so it's good for, see it's about 80 years old now and, and it'll be good for at least another 80 years.
addition to restoring the carousel, Harry is one of the most creative mechanical people you could ever meet. He's also built a two-person pedaling helicopter ride, a 30-foot tall working clock with a tractor wheel as a pendulum, and he found a whole herd of little scooter cars for kids and Bill. I just enjoy uh, seeing kids smile and having fun. It'll just run for a hundred years, no, no problem at all. This is Dean Hellinger, director and vice president of Mariah's Museum of History and Art in Shelby. And people have been very generous to give us a lot of local history. Of course, the, the main thing that people know about Shelby, Montana is the fight. July 4th, 1923, the World Championship fight between Jack Dempsey and Mr. Gibbons was held here. We have a lot of memorabilia here. It's a, quite a fascinating story and there are a lot of books. They're still, still writing books. I can't believe there's not a movie made about it. Because it seems, uh, so Ruben yeah. told us a little of the story of how the promoter, correct, was kind of a shady fella. Uh, not Demp yeah, Dempsey's manager. Dempsey's manager, Kearns, yeah. Kearns. Yeah. He apparently had, and this just came out in, the, in that latest book, he apparently had a, a knit to pick about Montana. His father had been in Montana, and a bunch of banker shysters took a bunch of his money. And, and this huh. author thinks that Kearns wanted to pick Shelby to, this is to the break him. This is an elaborate getting back at it? Yeah, getting back at it. It's kind of an interesting story. That's amazing. Interesting post, yeah. Huh. I'd love to show this. This is the arena. Now, when they finally decided oh, wow. that they're going to do the fight, they in, a, in a month, they built this arena from nothing, from wood, and to seat over 40,000 people. Now, in Montana, we know that the biggest thing in Montana is the Washington Grizzly Stadium, 26,000. This is... 90 years ago, 1923, in a little town that had less than a thousand people. When the fight started, uh, a bunch of people broke in and uh, sat wherever they wanted. You can see some pictures here. This looks like the stadium was full, but it was taken, all the empty seats were behind the photographer, uh -huh. see? Was it a financial success? Uh, no. And the reason is, uh, the original contract was for $300,000, which was an awful lot of money. And they raised $200,000, but they didn't make the third payment. And Kearns' manager was going to call the fight off. And the word got out that the fight was canceled. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people who had chartered uh, trains to come canceled. And that's what ruined it. Because he was on, a, on the road to success. And Dempsey said he was going to fight regardless because no it, what, it had been two, two years since he had fought and it was all arranged and he'd trained here and everything. He was going to fight, but the word got out and there's no social media in those days like there is now and people only had, well, there was very little radio even in those days here, mostly newspaper, but the word got out and so that's what canceled. So they lost money. There were, there were probably 12,000 people saw the fight. is the place to view old photographs and memorabilia of the fight. But it's also a great place to try and absorb bits of Dean's encyclopedic knowledge of the history of Shelby. From turn-of-the-century looms to Jack Horner fossils and a fully recreated general store from the early 1900s. The museum is huge. What you think is just another room opens into another and another and another. It's really something you just have to see for yourself. That used to be the safe over there, which is, um, so it was an old bank. It used to be the promoter, the newspaper. And um, now it's a yoga studio, the first yoga studio in the High Line. This is Brooke Skillman, owner and instructor of Jivataya Yoga and Wellness in downtown Shelby. 
I lived here for high school. I grew up in Wyoming. Um, she's born and raised diehard Shelby. She loves Shelby. She's county commissioner. And so um, this is her place. This is her, you know, home. And so I kind of ran from it right after high school. I booked a ticket to Hawaii a year before I graduated even <laughs> and <laughs> haven't been back. Yeah. I haven't been back for 15 years. So I came back to say hi. I live in Puerto Rico and Asia and I was on my way to see my mom. I just had a baby. So um, yeah, we just came to see my mom for that and the hurricane hit Puerto Rico. So it, I didn't want to go to Puerto Rico. There's no food there still. Just open it up for a couple months while we wait till Puerto Rico you know gets back on its feet and um, it's turned into me not wanting to quite leave right away because I have a pretty good clientele and um, they I left for a month to go to Puerto Rico and check it out and I came back and they were pretty happy I was back so yoga's come you know a long ways in this little town. I had to change my whole perspective um, and what I love about it is the community and for example the other day I went to the gas station and there was a hur or, uh, earthquake when I was in Nepal and so he's like oh you're the one that was in we were all praying for you I mean the whole town the church, everybody was praying for me because I just didn't have service. I was 300 miles away from the earthquake, so we didn't get, we weren't in the middle of it, but I had no idea people were over here like actually getting down on their knees and praying for me. So this was, um, a, that was a moment. I was like, wow, I really, everybody knows each other. Everybody supports each other. And uh, it's turned into me, I would never, in a million years think I'd be here with a yoga studio. But it's, it's so exciting to bring something new and flavorful. I could go open up a studio in Missoula. And I have, I did teach in Missoula 10 years ago or something. But um, this is just so much more fun. We'd actually met Brooke on our way to the while in town on our last day. So when we were done chatting with her, we headed for a nice cold beer. The bar has a massive amount of character, a real jukebox, and most importantly, a really good barkeep with a great sense of humor. Gary Harmon. We're in Shelby, Montana at the tap room that the wife and I own. My name is Gary Harmon. This is our place. There's three calendars here I bought down at a second hand store in Valier, and that old Schlitch up oh there. God, I paid $55 for that. And all these calendars here were businesses in Shelby. Tea Garden Bar used to be right over there where the S Bank was. COD Laundry was just down the street from Mark's Tires over there. And this one here is an Alibi Club one. It's got my aunt and uncle's name on it. Bud and Buddy Turk from 1952. This one here was an old dynamite guy that lived that had a a store out there by the drive-in theater. Uh, he had a partner and they had it where they kept the TNT and the nitroglycerin and everything and his partner got blown up. We got the little seven ounce cans. Back in 1976 on the 200th anniversary they made these beers for all the presents up to 1976. Okay. And that's what, this is the only one that I have left. The first one. They still had the pulled tab. It's just a regular old Wurlitzer. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's free all the time. Oh, there's a lot of old time country, a lot of rock and roll, very little rap. We usually uh, punch it out. <laughs> tap room where the beer is colder than your ex-wife's heart. <laughs> no, she, the ex is, she's a good person. She, she goes along with it pretty good. Yeah, good sense of humor about it. 
Yeah, I think, I hope so. <laughs> she better. I made bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. You should go buy a new window, man. <laughs>of Montana towns for most tourists, it should be. Because sometimes the place that's on its way to a destination is the destination itself. And like any other small town, if you look just a little bit, you'll be rewarded with the Montana gold standards of friendly faces, good food, and something cold to drink. At the end of the day, history and hospitality mingle on every street corner in Shelby. And as always, it's the people that make a place what it truly is. A place with character. The old saying is, shall be born, shall be bred, when I die, I shall be dead. <laughs> <laughs>